as we start kind of moving into more specifics, you talked uh, earlier, you threw out the term like a sovereign balance sheet. So like ways that you could become more sovereign, I suppose that's kind of what you meant. But um, if, uh, if the whole world becomes global, you know, uh, falls under globalization, uh, uh, centralization, you know, um, uh, under control of the WF, et cetera, um, how, how do people think through that? I mean, uh, I guess just try to keep as many options open as you can, or are you actively keeping a tally of places that are more friendly than others? Yeah. So uh, first things first is I think you have to start looking at, uh, it, it sounds a little bit esoteric, but you have to start looking at freedom as an asset. So, uh, you know, you're an investor, I'm an investor, we're, we're sophisticated uh, finance guys for a lot of your readers are very sophisticated um, uh, in finance. And I think if you think about the world in terms of assets and liabilities, I mean, yeah, you've, you've got to think about freedom as something that you would have on your balance sheet. Um, and, you know, it, in many respects, you know, these things like your nationality, uh, you know, where you live, your domicile, location, uh, tax residency, et cetera, these could also be assets. They could also be liabilities, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and, you know, I think it's important to, to take an honest, just as you would take a very honest appraisal if you were conducting due diligence on an investment deal or researching the company, um, you know, to really take an honest and very objective assessment of the assets and liabilities, again, on that sovereign balance sheet using, uh, you know, the idea that freedom is really an asset is your, is the location where you are, you know, for example, where you're living, is that an asset to you or is it a liability? If it's a place that, you know, every day you're like, what are these idiots going to do today? You know, the kind of place where you're living, where you've got to step over, you know, uh, hypodermic needles and, you know, and, and feces on your way to the, to the corner store or whatever, is that an asset or is that a liability? You know, are your local politicians, the kinds of people, you know, that are saying we're coming for you, Jeff Bezos, right. um, you know, is that an asset or is it a liability? Did the police, you know, stand there while, you know, a bunch of uh, deranged teenagers go and take over government buildings uh, and declare an autonomous zone? Is that an asset or a liability? And, and it's important, I think, to take an honest appraisal of that and, and actually even try to to quantify and value as you would any other asset, whether it's, you know, it's an intangible asset, maybe a little bit more difficult to value like intellectual property, certainly more difficult to value than cash in a bank or the value of Apple stock, but it's absolutely an asset uh, or it could be a liability. And I think something like a, uh, you know, a second passport, another bank account, these sorts of things, these are assets. And the idea really is that, uh, you know, the more options you have, if you think about it like that, that's all that means is that there's more assets on your balance sheet. So if you have the ability, for example, if you have a, a small portfolio of residencies in different countries that you can go and live in and, you know, work in or bring your family or whatever the case may be, each of those is an asset on your sovereign balance sheet. Yeah. Um, you know, if you yeah. have, you know, all, all these different things. And so that's really, I think, kind of the way to look at it is as a, you know, question of, you know, what does your sovereign balance sheet look like? And think about it with respect to assets and liabilities. Yeah, I like that. I talk a lot about, um, you know, the, the goal of, you know, investing and making money isn't just to go stockpile a bunch of money, but money gives you options. And so mm -hmm. I think about it like that. And to your point, um, there's assets that you could also own that would increase your optionality. Um, mm -hmm. It's very difficult right now. Like the world's changing so fast. And so like the U S passport was an asset uh, a year and a half ago. <laughs> and then after the pandemic right. in whatever, April or May of last year, it was a liability. It was like the worst passport to have. Um, yeah. And so like, it, it can quickly shift. And so I guess having that optionality, multiple options. You were, you were better off with a passport from Venezuela uh, than you were with a U.S. passport in like May of last year. Right. So, uh, yeah. So just keeping those options. Just, just in terms of, just in terms of travel, uh, just to be clear, in terms of travel options and things like that. If you, you need the get, amount of you know, countries that would allow you to come The in. amount of countries that you could go to. Yeah. So I don't want to say Venezuela is a better place. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying in terms of travel, uh, the number of countries where you could go without a visa. Yeah. I mean, you were, you were hard pressed to get anywhere with a U.S. visa last year, uh, with a U.S. Yeah. passport last year. 